Welcome back, y'all, to the 67th episode. Six. 66th episode of the Movie Closet. We have a real special one tonight. Uh, we are choosing our best of 2017. Boom. Top five of 2017. End of the year, boy. End of the year special. We got Ian DJ Housecat in tonight. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to oh. the closet, friend. Friend. Buddy. Yeah. Pal. All right. Uh, Matt, what's the movie closet? To any new listeners out there? Typically, the movie closet is four pals trapped in a closet picking movies based off the theme. We all pitch our movies. We vote on the movie. The winner, we watch the movie and we come back and discuss it. However, tonight, we're changing it up a bit. Format change. Format change. Let us Flipping know if you like script. it. Let us know if you like it. Maybe we'll just do this every time now. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it'll just be something special. Movie yeah. causes specials. So yeah, we're talking, we're going to start with top five movies we saw this year to end the glorious year of 2017. Uh, um, I say we all like, does ever, everyone have them? In like, I agree with Housecat. What'd I, you say? Oh, I said I want to call it glorious. Yeah, it's all right. Splendid. <laughs> um, Splendid, yeah. Should does everyone have them in like order of how their favorite to fifth favorite? No, I, just I have, do. That's I don't have, I have in order. order, but I just have top five. The okay, I, have, I, I just have top order. five. Well, I just thought we could like each rattle off one Ooh, at a time. See. I don't yeah, think it needs to be like. Does it need to be top favorite to no? Least favorite? It doesn't have to. I mean, I did it that way. Me too. It, I can't. Think you don't have to do it. I mean, I you can equally them. like them all. Yeah, it's true. I have it's six. hard to sort them. So yeah, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I didn't see shit for movies this year. I, I saw know. more than I thought I did. Yeah, me too. And reflecting on it, I, I saw yeah. a lot more than I thought. I definitely didn't like more movies than I liked that came out this year. Wait, what? I disliked more movies than I liked like. this so year. So you're saying it was a bad year for movies? I don't know if it was a bad year or if I just didn't see enough movies. Oh, okay. I saw about... Because I'm stuck in this fucking room with you guys. Oh. Yeah, we can't get out. <laughs> ben, you know... You're stuck in this room, Fuss. So am I. And I've seen about 44 movies this year. Yeah, Bass has seen Not including the closet movies. movies. You... Don't get so close. Oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah, how many movies have we watched in the closet this year? Uh, uh What about... Wouldn't it be the episode? Probably less than 30. Because what, it was... 50 was a year. So, I don't know, half that. Yeah, probably 30. 20 or 30. Give or take. Nice. We get a statistician out there. Yeah, uh, our one you fan. Can you yeah. calculate Alexis, that? Alexis, get on it. Boom. Yeah. Can we get a number crunch? All right. Well, let's start with our favorite, our top five, our fifth favorite movie, or just one of the five. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever's on your list, let's shout them out all does, at once. Does anyone want to go first, or I have go seven down, movies? Want to go down the line? I need to narrow you down. You can put some on your. All right, list. Sam can go last in this first round. Ian. Give us uh, one of your f top five for the year. Let's hear uh, it, buddy. First, I guess for first pick would be John Wick Chapter Two. Oh, John Wick! I didn't see that. That's all I wanted to see for it's sure. Such a, well, I mean, like they just do it so well. Like I wouldn't say it's better than the first one. I think they're both like, equal. Like they do it well enough that we're both like equal out to me. Yeah, I was super wasted when I watched that. So I remember like half of it. Yeah. He's the guy you send to kill the boogeyman. Yeah, I remember the fucking, like, when he went to, like, gear up mm -hmm. to go infiltrate this shit. That was pretty dope. Mm -hmm. when Did he... they kill his pet again? No. <laughs> no. That's what I asked. The whole Whatever. beginning of the first, well, of the movie is just him getting his car back, like, from the yeah. first movie. That's nice. the beginning of the second movie. He finally gets his car back, and he's, you know, with the Russian guys, and he's just like, let's just have peace. I want to I, I be done. 
Yeah, there's a lot of like on like assassin code shit because like he gets like summoned by a guy because he like owes him one. You, so to, like, in order to summon John Wick, do you have to turn off the bathroom lights and say, say his name in the yeah. mirror three John times? Wick. John Wick. John Wick. <laughs> Wick. 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 My dog. John Wick. John Wick. John I have Wick. arrived. I'm here. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. Mm-hmm. Action good, packed. I'm they, sure. Yeah, they changed the action movie genre. Mm-hmm. Some sick choreographed. It's all gun like fights. Oh well, well, yeah, I like Ooh. that because a lot of them are just like one shot scenes. Like, have you ever seen that scene oh, in yeah. one of the newer Takens? Yeah. Where, like, he's jumping over a fence, and it li- it's literally five shots of different camera angles of him just jump- jumping over a fence. <laughs> they put it all together to make it, like, this cool action sequence, but it's just, like, here, here, here. Just, that's like, ridiculous. Just, that's like, too just, much. Because all that's, the... That's, only, go ahead. I'm, I'm just saying that's too fucking much. Well, you say the first Taken was the only good one. I didn't, I've never seen any other two Takens. I just... Me either. I just wouldn't care for it. What's I the saw point? all of them. You did? Have you? Yeah. yeah. I've seen them. I don't know if I could do it. Only the first one's good. Yeah, I, that's what I'm I saying. Could, that's why I didn't even bother. My, my daughter's been taken. Now my wife's been taken. Then who gets taken in the third one? My grandma. He does. He gets yeah. taken. <laughs> okay. Okay. taken. Okay. He gets like framed for something. Oh. His uh his identity was taken. I bet they'll make a taken four and it'll be like a prequel taken to his he, virginity. He's, he's taking. No, his virginity is taken. Matt. <laughs> Matt. A taken rape. five, <laughs> taken back Sunday. Taking back Sunday. That would be funny. Takes taking back Sunday. All right, let's get back <laughs> okay, on track okay, here. Okay, All right. Well, um, well, wait, one of the cool things we say is that Lawrence Fishburne was in this movie, and it's the first time they've actually been in the movie together since the Matrix tr- trilogy. Nice. So I thought that was yeah. pretty cool. Interesting. Yeah. And, and they, John Wick. Yeah. Nice. And, and then they Common, set up a John Wick three too. Yeah, they are. That's at the very end. And then Common was in it, so I was kind of. He was actually not too bad in that movie. Nice. You working tonight, John? No. Like, what's he, he say? He says, says yeah, and then Common's like, "Fuck." You know, he's like, "You work in the yeah." He's like, "Are you working the night?" And he's like, "Yeah." And he's just like, "Have you had a good evening?" And I think that either means have you killed someone or not. No, I think he said. I think then he asked if working Common's tonight, working John. tonight, and then yeah. he's like, "Yeah." So yeah. you're working again because he's like protecting the person he's got to kill. Yeah, it's like in the first one, the cop comes. Yeah. So you're working again, John. Yeah, and he's just like got like twelve bodies. He's just dead. <laughs> yeah. He's a fucking legend. All right, Bass, give us your number five. Number five. All right. Um, my fifth favorite from my list here is uh, Leatherface. Really? Okay. I've never yeah. seen it. So I haven't seen it. I would see it, though. Yeah, I missed that I'm, one. I'm, a Texas I'm kind of a sucker guy. for, like, origin movies. Is it and, his origin? And this one is the origin of Leatherface. But I thought they did that in, like, you know... The beginning one. Yeah, but it's a remake of that. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I think <laughs> I thought this one was actually <laughs> like, sounds like some, okay. some Evil Dead shit going <laughs> yeah. on. This one was actually I thought really well done. Um, it's like they it looks very period accurate. Um, they do a good com a good balance between practical and uh CG effects. So um, it's mainly practical. Does it show Leatherface's yeah. childhood? Yeah, it does. And it's like super fucked up, I'm guessing. Um, it's probably beat and shit. I thought he yeah. was a baby dumpster. Uh, a baby. <laughs> <laughs> baby, well, dumpster. baby dumpster. He's a walking baby dumpster. <laughs> he's, he's a kid in this fucked up family. <laughs> And Which, of course, they are. They're cannibals. This is where we put all the aborted fetuses <laughs> in the baby <laughs> dumpster. <laughs> well, that's what yeah, was. Uh, he's a kid in this fucked up family, and everything's fine. Um. He, I want to give too much away, but it's it's at the end of the movie when he gets, or not quite exactly the end, but like three quarters away through the movie when you see what turns him into like Leatherface with his fucked up face, <laughs> and when he wears a leather mask for the first time, and then uh, it's a leather face, and then from then on, that's where he. After that, that's when he really, really starts developing. Comes into his who own. He is. It's a uh, coming of age story. <laughs> I mean, in a, face in a sense, it is a coming of age story for him. Actually, there are some coming of age uh, moments moments in it. First time he kills a person. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I think there was also like the first time he kisses a girl in it too. No <laughs> way, that's weird. Right. Where's what the, the, the baby the dumpster? Um, He's just gonna chop it off five seconds later. Well, not not exactly. Um, it, Gives but, some insight into his psyche. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It does give some insight into his psyche, why he is the way he is, and uh, I thought family. it was a good movie overall. Okay. Nice. 
All right. I'll okay. have to check it out. Did you see the one before this? It was just it was another Texas Chainsaw movie. 3D. Yeah, whatever. At the very yeah. end, I can't remember. She he has like the main character's like her his cousin or something. And he's like fighting the like the sheriff of the town in a chainsaw battle, Leatherface is. And then Whoa. and then the main character of the of the movie is this chick and she's like, Stop. get him, cuz, and throws him the chainsaw. I was like, yeah, chainsaw battle. I'm like, what Stop. is this? Yeah. Stop. That's yeah. my advice. Stop, Stop making those fucking movies. It's time to stop. To I stop. mean, I think they should have stopped at the beginning. Yeah. Isn't that the one that's called Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning? Yeah. And that came out like in 08. It never stopped. That's the one where they hit the cow, which I thought was pretty pretty brutal. Yeah. Was, I haven't seen those. They and, hit the cow? Yeah, well, they were driving and like, because two of them were supposed to go to the army and one of the guys didn't want to go to the army. And so his brother was just like, oh, you don't want to go to the army. You're not a man. And so they're not watching the road. All of a sudden... Cow, yeah. No, I remember that. Let's yeah, and then they put it in the cow dumpster. Yeah, there are some. Pretty <laughs> no, it was right next to the baby dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> it, cow Not dumpster. to be confused. Yeah. yeah, it's a much bigger dumpster. Yeah. All right, I'll go. My number five. It was kind of good, but I was a sucker for it. Justice League. Justice League. <laughs> ah, I just took a complete Justice guess on that. I think too. that's number six for me. It was. It just had a bunch of cool moments. The fucking the studio interfered way too much. Uh, you can tell it's like two different movies. It kind of sucks towards the end. But like, it has so many fucking great like Batman moments, and uh, the CG wasn't bad everywhere, but it was bad in some parts. I just fucking wish Zack Snyder could have finished it instead of every- Josh Whedon. Is Joss that, Whedon. Joss? Yeah. No, that was Josh. Joss Whedon. Joss. Joss Whedon. I mean, it, it does get a lot of flack for shit. Like, it is pretty generic. Um, there is some really bad CGI. But it was fucking Justice League. We got to see, like, Cyborg and Flash for the first, and Aquaman for the first time. It's a spectacle, man. Ben <laughs> Affleck is my favorite Batman just because of the shit they do with him. You mean, like, period, throughout all the Batman movies, he's your favorite Batman? Yeah. He's my favorite. Oh. What about Val Kilmer? No. Second favorite. Wait, Val Kilmer's your second <laughs> no, favorite I'm just, Batman? I'm just kidding. I was going to say, then George, George Clooney's my favorite, my first. I think uh, Jack Nicholson's my favorite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I liked when Michael Keaton played the Joker. <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't know. It was fucking, it dropped the ball in a lot of places. But it was just so cool to see these characters come together and have some big cool moments. The other moments, it was like a, it was a cheesy MacGuffin story. And it really fizzled out at the end. But yeah. and I'm fucking pissed off that they WB can't make up their mind which direction to go. And now it's all just falling apart. Yeah, it's like a Because Affleck's mess. out now, and yeah, this is the last probably the last time we'll see Ben Affleck. And what the fuck are they gonna do? The flashpoint timeline, aren't they doing that? Yeah. Yeah, we're Wait, fl- what? Flash goes back in time and saves his mom and it changes the whole universe. And oh, so it's a butterfly effect. Yeah. So that's how they get away with it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He's going to come out I mean, genetically looking different because of it. I still want to see it again. See that. I want to watch it again. Anyway, so it had so, it had enough cool moments for me. No, it was a fu- yeah, yeah, that's my whole thing. It's a fun movie. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't think people should read so much into it, but I guess you can't help it. Well, it just sucks cuz everyone fan. always like compares DC to Marvel and that's the main thing. What fucking pisses me off, all right, is that people shit all over Zack Snyder for Batman vs. Superman. And now, people are bitching for the Zack Snyder version of the movie. Like, what do you want, people? <laughs> Make up your fucking mind. They just want a bitch. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's just the thing now with the movies, mm-hmm. especially those big, like, uh, franchise films. Everyone's going to get on the wagon. You know, you're going to bitch about something mm-hmm. about the movie. Like, super fans are going to bitch about something, and then everyone's getting on the wagon. It's just the trend now. No one's happy. Yep. Fuck no you, Rotten Tomatoes. But, no one's happy with but that. But Matt, <laughs> those seats on the wagon, they're comfy as fuck. Yeah, I, well, yeah apparently so. <laughs> because no one's fucking happy. Right. But yeah, I mean, again, we're, we're going to make a DC move episode one of these days, and I'll really dive into it. And Ben's going to fucking bitch. I'm going to have an aneurysm. Oh. But all right, that's my five Justice League. You will see. And it fucking, it's way more, the, the costume designs are way cooler than Marvel. Just going to say that. Last word. Boom. My number five. Is the new Alien? Ooh, number five. Me, I think who? Me. It was just us three. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, me. We went there after ben. David's place. Yeah, we, we went, went and saw it at like a we midnight went and saw screening. It. What, what did you guys think about it? I liked um, it a lot. I'll double down on this. 
because we have some overlap here. Mm-hmm. That was my favorite movie of the year. Okay. All, All right. right. So, yeah. All right. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. I like how they explored more on it, like, gave you the origin of the alien, which I kind of do and do not like at the same time. Yeah, yeah that was my thing. It's kind of, uh, it's, it's felt like, to me, I remember if it, like it felt like they could have done something so much. Well, that and the little baby, little baby alien. That was like, dumb. Oh, Jesus. That was yeah, bad. That whatever was, it was. That was stupid as fuck. Yeah. That it, was stupid it as It did, uh, but like it, it made sense with like the theme that really Sky's been building with this in Prometheus, like who created you, like gods and men. Mm-hmm. So like we made the fucking androids. The androids made the aliens. Oh. And like we like we're trying to find the- and like the people who made us, like remember in Prometheus when they like yeah. try to kill us? So we hate them. The android fucking hate David the hates uh Wayland. Yeah. Cause he was like treat he didn't treat him like a son or some shit. Cause well wasn't his like that like version of Android off or something. That's the reason. Yeah, why he was defective because yeah. he had he could like they they gave him the ability to create mm-hmm. and it like fucked up his circuitry and shit. He's like, there's like a moment when he like misquotes a composer, and that's how you know like he's defective because he shouldn't he should fucking know that shit because yeah. he's a machine. Right. Mm-hmm. But then you know he's like kind of unhinged. Mm. But yeah, it fucking looked great. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. it looked beautiful. Great score. Danny McBride whooped. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he was mm. the best character in that shit. People mm. kind of shit on the CG alien, but I liked it. I, I thought it looked badass. Like, yeah, they they did. Suck. What did they shit on it about? Like it's just because you can fucking see the whole thing. Like he's supposed to be like lurking in the dark. It's like, dude, we fucking seen like four alien movies. Like You're aliens not, two, right? It's there. not gonna be scary anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's only the well. The first one's really like the only actual like thriller one that gets you on edge. Yeah. Because the second one, yeah, there's alien stuff. And it's kind of scary, but it's more of an action pack. Whereas yeah. the first one's kind of more of a thriller. Because there's only one alien versus, like, a bunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. and it fucking... The face huggers were dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was cool. It was just cool concept. It it was really cool, easy to get into that, like, sci-fi mm-hmm. world mentality. It really was. I like the location they chose to shoot it. That's what I liked about it a lot. Yeah, like it the, looked great. Like, I remember in the trailer, is the part that got me, it's like when they're in the field. Yeah. Uh, those are some of the best parts I mm-hmm. like. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. Yeah, and like when shit starts going down, all the alien aliens start coming out. Mm-hmm. That fucking like subtle score that builds up, mm-hmm. it's like, Doo-doo. and it's like super subtle and like still kind of quiet, but it adds so much tension to the moment. It was awesome. Ridley Scott, you're the shit. I thought it was really good, so but I, I thought it was gonna go a lot slower than it was just by like compared off the trailer. Like it went faster than it. I, w- you know, it was super. Yeah, it was super like. Uh, Fast pace. You yeah. couldn't catch your breath almost. That's yeah. what I kind of felt. It's like shit just mm-hmm. kept hitting the fan. Yeah, just that's what not, I thought. Yeah. So Which, it was like, yeah, it's like a punch in the stomach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only part where it fell off for me was when they go back to the shit. I know. That's when it was like, fuck, you should have ended it. You yeah. know. Are you talking about when they kill it at the very end? When the, when the alien's on the ship. Oh, okay. Yeah. That whole thing just kind of mm-hmm. dragged. And yeah. But it had a cool little twist ending, which was it nice. It did. It did. It Seems like every time they kill an alien, they blow it out in an airlock, though. Yeah, that is how they kill it every time. No. Yeah. Airlock that shit. Yeah. Come on now. There's just like so much sexual tension in it. Mm-hmm. So many. It's like an onion of layers. <laughs> layers. Ogres have layers. <laughs> yeah, that, that I was is. just about to say that. It right. was good. Yeah, I really, I really liked it. I really liked it. Give it a thumbs up. Especially if you're an alien fan. I said, there's your Shrek meme for the night. See that shit. Boom. All right, Sam. Number Let's five. hear one of yours. Okay. Um, I think my fifth one would be... This was it British? Yes. Um Yes, it was British. Gun, gun. Horror comedy called Prevenge. Mm. You say horror comedy? Mm-hmm. Kind of. Oh, okay. It was a comedy, right? Yeah, it was definitely a comedy. Let me see. I haven't looked it up yet though. Yeah, Sam and I went and saw this one in theaters. It was at Ragtag. Dun, dun, um I don't know dun. any of the actors in it, but essentially it's about this pregnant woman. And she, I guess, is hearing, like, the babies, like, talking to her and telling her to kill people. What? Like, kill specific people. And so she will, like, come up with these elaborate, like, stories as to why she's, like, interacting with them. Like, there's this guy at the bar and she, like, becomes, like, a different person to in order to, like, lure him into a certain Infiltrate. Place. Yeah. And so she can kill him. There's this, he, she was at this pet store trying to get this like fish or something at one point, right? Mm-hmm. 
and yeah. then she kills him. And then one of my favorite ones was um, when she. Oh, I'm so bad at explaining it, but the, <laughs> this is the weak part of the episode. Um, when she was like acting like she needed a roommate. And so she went to this dude's house to be like the third roommate in this situation. And then she actually starts to like this dude. Mm-hmm. And then like the baby wants to kill it, enjoy a, his company or whatever. And then the roommate eventually comes back. And she kills the roommate. Hmm. So I am not so explaining so this well at all. I think, I think if I'm remembering right, which I might, I mean, I haven't, it was a while back when we yeah. saw this movie, but it seemed like the movie uh, was kind of a metaphor for just one, like the frustration of a woman when she's pregnant and like everyone trying to fucking coddle her and like help her do everything. Um, and two, like the frustration that this character has with males because it was obvious that. The per- her baby daddy like left her alone to like do this, all this crazy shit by herself. But okay, so the twist is because I'm assuming no one's gonna watch this movie. But the twist is at the end, you figure out that everybody that she's killing was on. They were on this like oh, that's rock right. climbing. Uh, yeah, they completely. were on this like rock climbing adventure, and. The instructor or whatever, I don't know. Anyway, so her husband or, like, baby daddy, I guess, ends up, like, falling and dying. And so, like, that's, like, why he left her alone. He didn't leave her. but That's right. Yeah. yeah that and cl- then. Yeah. Sorry. I forgot about that. And then, um, so she's kind of taking revenge or the baby's taking revenge on um, everybody who didn't, like, help save him what yeah because they had to yeah so that that's what oh, it was. They had i remember to, they thinking had to like that, cut him loose because they were all gonna yeah oh, they all die so they had to make so this hard decision really the baby talking no or was it just kind oh, of her it's, mind? it's like in her yeah. head but it has like this she's really like, co- weird creepy. she blocked it off yeah like, she's like it's like basically like that she's using that as like an excuse an excuse yeah. I see. That's a pretty interesting concept. Yeah, it was crazy. It was, yeah. and it was it's just really funny because her like sense of humor about everything is really funny. But also, she she was like afraid to have the baby, right? Yeah. And then once she had it, like the voice like stopped because she thought that the baby was like starting to like want to kill her, and wow. then like have her kill herself or whatever. But then, so she was afraid to have this baby, and then once she had the baby, like, everything stopped, and everything was cool. Yeah, and the voice She stopped. had, like, a connection with the baby. She thought the baby was, like, going to be the Antichrist or something. Going to be a monster, <laughs> yeah, it because, was, because it's attached to this huge, crazy thing. Yeah. With the, Damn. It was really fucking sad. Yeah, yeah, it was a crazy... Honestly, like, it once was, you found out about everything. Right, because, like, the that's what uh what I was saying earlier about the metaphor thing is like that's what the, it makes you believe up until the twist yeah and then you find all the shit yeah it, it was a crazy combination it was a crazy movie because it was like really funny uh obviously horror and then like this kind of like fucking deep super sad like whirlwind of yeah it sounds pretty emotion. good yeah, yeah it was good it I was, good. It was really and, good and and the best part about it was that I liked the fact that it was like a pretty like good movie with such a ridiculous plot. And yeah. It's like this chick's pregnant and her baby is telling her to kill people, but it ends up being like pretty like well written and smart. But it just seems like it's gonna be like this stupid, ridiculous movie because it's called Revenge and mm. yeah, pre revenge. Yeah, but the or pregnant revenge. The voice for the baby is so. <laughs> It's kind of what annoying. the baby has a voice. Yeah, yeah. like it'll, it'll like actually like it's like time. like a high pitch kind of like it, chipmunky voice. Kind of reminds me of like which is weird. <laughs> it, I don't know. That I forget, I forget how I felt. About that kind that. of situation reminds me of kind of like one of the first Friday the Thirteenth. You know, Jason's mom. Yeah, mm. she's hearing Jason's voice all the time. You know, it's a younger. Yep. Yeah, it was a pleasant. Yeah, it was a pleasant surprise movie because I didn't know what to think going into it, but it ended up being good. Yeah, because there was like five or some so like large scenes where love like the people that she was supposed to murder and then it would be interspersed with like her going to the doctor to check up on the baby and I'd forget like how that whole thing and it I guess it makes you think that she's gonna kill 
her like OBGYN. Too bad it's not oh. Patrick Stewart voicing the baby. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that doesn't really matter, but Yeah, it sounds like some good like say. underlying themes in it. Yeah, I it was really cool. Liked like it. anxiety and shit yeah. and yeah, exactly. coping with loss. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. All right. I forgot that I watched that this year. Sick. But yeah. All right, Ian. Let's get number four. Uh, what you got? Probably was gonna go with a uh, Thor. Door? Thor. <laughs> Thor? Yeah. Door. Door. door the movie. <laughs> door. It's just a two hour movie of a of just a door. That's really? all it is. It's a fake door, is yeah. the twist. Yeah, at the very end, it doesn't go anywhere. Thor, yeah, I didn't get a chance to see Thor yet. I liked I it a lot. Yeah. So I think I saw it a couple of days after it came out. I don't know. Just the way like I've never seen any of the Thor movies, so I kind of took a chance on this one. I heard it was good. It was really good because the way they like combine certain things like Planet Hulk, you know how he's a gladiator mm-hmm. and they kind of mix everything in with that. So they don't like just directly, yeah, they don't directly just take it, you know, from comic books and make the comic into a movie. They kind of like mix a bunch of things into it. And let's not forget Takai Watiti, the director from New Zealand, directed uh, What We Do in the Shadows, that Mm -hmm. vampire movie that I love. Oh, yeah. He's hilarious. He's dope. Yeah, I heard this. I heard this Thor was really funny. I heard there was like a lot of good. Comedy. Yeah, it wasn't like comedy. cheesy wise, you know. How like yeah, and you that's know, that's Watiti, baby. Yeah, <laughs> like when we saw like, you know, the new Star Wars. We'll get into that later, but you know, the cheesy lines everyone hates. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, that aren't necessary. You're just like, come on, really, we come we on. don't need that. Yeah, oh, yeah. S- speaking of Watiti, seemed, what? Well, I was just gonna say, it just seems like a lot of people were. Right, like just kind of writing this movie off, just like ah, oh, it's probably gonna suck. Well, mm-hmm. it wouldn't have been as big if Hulk wasn't in it. Yeah, that's, that's true. Wait, I, Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen this uh, new one yet. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Hopefully yeah. next week. Cool color palette choice. Yeah, the, 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 I was gonna say, say like the the color palette's really cool. It's kind of brighter. Yeah, and then I thought they did that really well with you know kind of an action packed movie, but it's like really bright yeah. compared to like Justice League, not in a bad way or anything. Like you know, it's just a darker tone. Uh huh. But in fucking what's her name? Who's the oh, god damn? What the main I chick? I forget her name. Uh, the one that's with Thor and everything. No, the villain. Oh Hallie yeah, no. I, can, I don't remember her name. Fuck. Hallie Portman. She was in the first Thor. Yeah. No, she's in. Ah, uh, she's so good. She. I can look up. But anyway, pretty much the premise is, is that Thor is looking for his brother, and he finds his brother, who's actually been impersonating his dad Odin the whole time. And then somehow, like, Odin dies, and so their, like, sister, who's, like, really evil, comes over and takes over everything. And Thor loses his hammer and yada yada, and all this stuff happens. Kate Blanchett. Oh, Kate Blanchett, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But yeah, with TD, I watched one of his first movies a couple weeks ago called Boy, and it was fucking amazing. It's about this, like, New Zealand kid, and his mom died giving birth to his little brother, and his dad has been, like, in jail for, like, robbery since he was like two mm-hmm. and he's like seven or eight now and he's like he has all these like made up stories to explain like why his dad's gone mm-hmm. like in his imagination and like he comes back and shit and he's trying to like start a gang he's like not really being a dad and then his kid's like dealing with it it's pretty dope it's a pretty dope movie yeah, it's just weird to go from that to Thor well this one was a while ago I'm just saying the range of some people do is just like yeah. you know, I would never picture something like that yeah he's fucking amazing mm-hmm. Watiti. Watiti. That's cool. He's great. He's great. He's great. Yeah, it's great. It's good. It's great. It's good. All right. Bass, let's hear your number four. Rhymes with Thor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my uh, fourth favorite movie of the year is Star Wars The Last Jedi. Oh! That's on my want to see list. Um, well, we can't really talk about it because we can't <clears throat> spoil it for Matt. Oh, that's uh, right. yeah. Well, I haven't seen Thor. Go ahead and talk That's about true. it, dude. It's okay. That's, ah, oh, man. It's like, I don't know, man. You'll be, you'll be very conflicted once you leave the theater. It yeah. was cool, but they did so much dumb shit. Yeah. Then I mean, I was kind of reading shit. that. I just, was reading that somewhere. It just like, being part of the Star Wars universe. I like Star Wars. It's definitely on there on my top five because it it's a beautiful looking movie. I like Star Wars, and there's a lot of nostalgia. Yeah. Um. That's what everyone wanted. Big thing, nostalgia. Man, me and Ian were talking to Pat <laughs> about this at the bar last night for like an hour. It's like they're fucking, they're, they're taking all these tropes from the old movies and kind of like turning them on their head, which is good. 
but it was like super disappointing mm-hmm. some of the 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 plot twists they did to change from the old ones you know yeah and it just half of it also felt like they're just trying to get rid of all these old characters and like the old shit so they can set up like the next three mm-hmm. that'll have nothing to do with these people mm-hmm. you know that's stupid so it's mm-hmm. just like a filler movie and you're just like god it did, damn it yeah it did feel like a filler movie mm-hmm. so you're just like god damn it when are we getting to the fucking meat of this shit and that night just leave you with like nothing on certain points. You know what points I'm talking well, about. Someone someone said on the internet, it's like this, this movie felt like really a, like a really long uh, movie to like get to nowhere. It was like yeah. for nothing to happen. Yeah, really nothing long, really. Nothing there's no happened. resolution at the, the end, first really. half was so slow. Yeah, I mean, I definitely will agree with that. The movie doesn't really go far, and the things that does happen that make make you think it's going far. Um, really wasn't that important. Uh, yeah, I mean, I liked that they're like switching it up and like starting to do their own thing, but it was it did kind of feel like a fuck you at some <laughs> points. What one thing that I thought was kind of cool the other day that I was watching a video where uh, the Asian um the Asian girl, not the one that died in the spaceship, her sister Rose. Yeah, her sister. Um. Uh, it was a it was a uh, casting at this building where they uh, were doing like co readings on scripts and stuff, and like when her and uh, the character that plays Finn, um, oh, they had got in a room together and started reading this script on the couch, like they instantly clicked, and uh, or like like they're they were. Like locked, they're like both locked into their character, like they are that person, and they like instantly clicked. Um, and like they felt it, and the directors and the casting people felt it as well. And it was just really cool watching the video because she's like, "Yeah, I didn't ever think I'd ever be part of Star Wars," and um, I don't know. It was just really interesting because, uh, like the emotion that they were both using in facial expressions, everything they're using in the movie, uh. They had the same ones during like the script reading, and like she had never seen the script before to this point, and it was just like clicked. It's kind of cool to see that process. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I heard that super uh, Star Wars super fans want to get rid of the movie. canon. Yeah, yeah, get, yeah, get rid of the canon. Off. That's yeah. dumb. Yeah, the get over timeline. it. Get over it. There are some great things in it, like mm-hmm. Kylo Ren. His, he had a lot of development. He I heard was that really was great. cool. Yeah, he was really some, great. I heard there's some badass action parts. Yeah, yeah there is a badass <laughs> action part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A. Yeah. yeah. The whole first half of the movie stupid and slow, but you know it was cool. Go watch it still. It was, Damn, that makes me not want to watch. it. And then there's I'd one watch, part in the movie it. where it's just like really like a big like what the fuck just happened. Yeah. 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 Like no, so the jokes. <laughs> Super cheesy. That's what I've heard. Just like really yeah, childish. Some of them didn't. Land. It's mostly like Ben says. Like, well, he said to me that he hates his. It's all the droids. I hate the droids. So, you know, they go like beep boop beep. He's like, oh, oh, oh. he's yeah. like, I'll say something back, but you don't know what he said. Yeah, yeah. Like she's like, what if you see Finn? Tell him I said, and then Chewbacca's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> she's like, yeah, tell him that. <laughs> yeah. what, what did he say? <laughs> what did he say? He didn't say something nice. We get it. Why did yeah. they all speak Chewbacca, but we don't? Yeah, well, Wookie. One thing that I did kind of think was a little funny. Um, uh, those little bird animals hated them. I yeah, I, I thought it was like course. a callback. They were trying to like take what uh, Guardian of the Galaxies did with Baby Groot in the second movie. I felt like that's what they were trying to. They were trying the, to make a cute toy yeah. they could sell. That's what yeah. Star Wars mm. sales are. That's what they're trying yeah. to do. Yeah, I mean, that's... Yeah, I feel like Star Wars... True. I mean, Star Wars did definitely did that shit when we were kids with the oh. Phantom Menace and shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I remember getting that stuffed animal. I mean, hey, you think the yeah. movie's getting made, baby? This yeah. movie sure. is definitely not the best in the whole... Rogue One was way better. Yeah, Rogue yeah. One was way better. But, like I said, the reason why it's on my list is nostalgia. It still looks... is a beautifully shot movie. Um, there was some very striking scenes, like, especially near the end of the movie. Um, and I don't know. It, it, it's just more of the nostalgia playing a role on that one, honestly. Nostalgia. Nostalgia is a pretty strong thing. I mean, I feel like that's a lot of the, the Star Wars 
I mean, to I, run, and to their credit, they're trying to get away from that, which I yeah. think is a good move. Yeah. They're starting to pave their own way because they're going to keep fucking making them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cash Cow. Disney owns it now. They're going to keep pumping it. Cash Cow. Well, I mean, like, one of the runner-ups for this uh, was... Let me look at my list here. All right, let's, let's not get into the deep, deep no, list. I'm just saying one of the things I thought was a runner-up to it that I really liked, I've watched a few times, just because it was super fucking funny, the Lego Batman movie. There you go, Lego Batman movie. Yeah. All right, well, Star Wars... Go check it out. Worth, worth a watch. Beep, 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 beep. It was. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed it, but there's just boring parts. All right, my my number four. I feel like this is a product of just me not seeing enough movies because I didn't think it like uh, I didn't think it fucking latched down to me like it did. But we were talking about it last night, and I was like, you know what? That is a fucking good movie. What? Logan. Oh yeah, Logan. <laughs> Logan. Logan. Way at the beginning of the year. Old yeah, that Logan. was like. Yeah, that was, I thought it was good. Yeah, yeah it was really, really good. good. It was just. And I'm well not done. an X Men fan to be. Yeah, honest. I'm not a big Wolverine fan and or X Men fan, mm-hmm. and it was pretty dope. I just sick thought it was action, cool. it was fucking dark. Yeah, mm-hmm. and know? it worked. It wasn't dark just to be dark. And what we were talking about, it's so the stakes are like sm- small scale. It's not like into the end world. of the world. Yeah, yeah, it's it's more personal. Yeah. Which was, I think that's what made it really good. And what I always say, what I liked about it, it's like it's the only superhero movie that doesn't feel like a superhero movie to it me. It really didn't. No. no. It just, just feels like, you know, just a guy and trying to get away from his problems. that was kind of refreshing to see because we have this, like, clusterfuck of so many fucking yeah. superhero movies they're pumping out. Yeah. And then yeah, you it was a nice change. And yeah. it was kind of a Western, too, in the same way. I liked the, it really uh, was. I liked it the, did the, have the Western feel, too. Yeah, the cinematography was really good in the deserts where they shot it at was really good. And they fucking killed them in the end, which mm-hmm. they never do. That was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was good, kind of a good cool, send off. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, send off for Hugh. Because what, what would they do if they didn't kill him off? I mean, Hugh Jackman was gonna stop being it. They would have to do something. Yeah, they needed to. Yeah, it was. It was a. I, yeah, I, I need to watch that again. It's been mm-hmm. a while. Yeah. yeah, I remember because I was waiting for the black and white version to come. Oh out. yeah, I forgot they had a black and white version. Yeah, I want to watch it in black and white. Yeah, see if it. Mm. It yeah, makes it makes a difference. Black and white would be really good. <clears throat> yeah, I just like how it made like painted Wolverine at the beginning all fucking broken, yeah, and yeah. beaten down by life and great like, and he's being like poisoned by his metal skeleton, yeah, his adamantium skeleton. That was a cool fucking idea. Yeah, yeah great performance, very personal story, great action. Logan. Oh, and the last thing is like I liked how they alluded because Fucked everyone's up. always asking what happened to the other X Men. They kind of alluded to it. They gave you kind of reason, but they didn't go too much into it. Which yeah, I kind of liked. and that's kind of cool. There's it's pretty much mystery. it's pretty much Xavier. Yeah. Xavier had a fucking seizure and just and killed them all. Yeah, yeah, it was a great world, like world building. Quick question: subtle world building that was nice in that movie. I wonder where uh, Deadpool's and uh, the old man Logan universe. That's what I'm not even sure. Like. I don't think they're part of the same few universe. I think Fox just owns them both. I don't think they're connected at all. They will be eventually. Well, never mind, because, you know, that couple of X-Men are in that yeah, movie. I don't know. So, it could be. All right. Yep. Well, there's Logan. Number what four. you got? Number four. Number four for me <laughs> was, so, I think this year was a pretty decent year for, I'm a huge horror fan, and I think that this year was a pretty good year for horror it's like a lot of refreshing films in my opinion came out uh and this was one of them number four uh it's a french film called raw it's also on my list uh yeah so i'll just make this my overlap i can say half of these movies that i've pitched that you guys pitch are on my top five list oh yeah i mean if they are just say it so so we can uh, just talk about it say well we can cross off logan logan was uh, on there. John Wick was my number two pick, so yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, raw French film. It is about a girl going to uh vet going to veterinarian school. Uh, she's also a vegetarian. She's also a vegetarian. A vegeta vegetarian. <laughs> um she her older sister is a senior, right? Upperclassmen, they don't. I don't know. Yeah, they just really say like lower talk. class versus upper class. Yeah, they don't really talk about it. Um, it seems like it's like a kind of a an exclusive school. Kind of gives you that feel. It's very like almost seems. Aside from the educational part of it, it almost seems like a frat kind of it like with feel. like hazing and yeah so like, like initiations and stuff like that like 
ton of those. Right. So like the girl is freshman and her and all the new uh, all of her classmates have to go through all these hazings and initiations. And one of them is to eat. What was it? Like a fucking it like raw. A, it was like a raw like rabbit. Oh, I remember you guys talking about that. Yeah, it was like a raw. It's a, it's some organ from a rabbit, but she has to eat it raw. She doesn't want to do it. Because she doesn't I, eat meat. Because she's a vegetarian. I, I she think I saw something about this. It was uh, like a, a liver. I, it was a liver. I think yeah, it was a liver, and was, yeah. And um, it was, I watched this like little thing about like movies actors like almost like didn't do and that movies that like slightly psychologically messed up actors minds 10 things and you the won't actor believe. that played played this was also like actual vegetarian i could see this and, fucking uh, they actually made her eat like real liver or something i believe this is the movie i remember seeing the method. video about the method. method yeah i mean this movie was pretty fucking gross i have to say it would definitely made my stomach hurry but so she has to eat she's a vegetarian she has to eat this raw rabbit liver and she doesn't want to do it so she's kind of throwing a fit and all the upperclassmen are giving her shit and her sister comes up and gives her a bunch of shit right yeah her sister is also a vegetarian up until college college but yeah the other girl didn't know that she started eating meat so did the girl did the girl eat the i can't remember if she ate the 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 liver i don't think she did I think her sister did it and called yeah. her like a pussy, essentially. Yeah. Um, pussy! But, but all the while, this girl is getting these like crazy strong cravings for meat for some reason. All of a sudden. Well, I think she, maybe she did eat it. Maybe she did eat it. I, I think know. she did eat it and that's what like started it. Yeah. So I think she eats it. Never mind. I'll take back what I said. And she, I think she eats I think, it. I can't remember though. Um, and she starts. Did getting- she fucking eat it? <laughs> hey, I need to know. It's definitely important whether she did or not. Yeah, yeah it does it's, sound like a pivotal moment. I mean, anyway, so it is. whether she did or not, I cannot really, really remember. But I do remember this: she starts getting these crazy, uncontrollable urges, like these, like to eat meat and to eat it raw for some reason. Well, so it starts out just eating meat because she starts out by like in the cafeteria trying to steal. Because she made a big deal about not eating it, and yeah. then like she doesn't want, she doesn't want to look like an asshole, right? So yeah, she's and, being a she's shamed. and so she like stuffs like a just a hamburger patty into her right coat, into her lab coat because they wear lab coats all the time. It's really weird, and Classy. then um, her like roommate, who's like this dude, was like, "Don't eat like if you're gonna eat me." For the first time, you have to eat it right. And so he takes her to, like, this food truck, which has, like, a bunch of, like, meaty sandwiches or whatever. Yeah. Meat. And <laughs> that's when she, like, first eats, like, that kind of, like, actual meat for the first time. And it wasn't raw, but, yeah. Eventually, Sorry. she <laughs> starts getting these crazy... Uh, You're going to stop. Yeah, I'm just going to give away the fucking thing. So eventually she's hanging out with her sister. Uh, she has these like uncontrollable urges to eat meat. And all of a sudden she just fucking bites off her sister's finger. Okay, you don't. That's not even what happened at all. I can't okay, remember it. Okay, okay I'll tell, it. I'll tell it then. Okay, okay. okay so. I can't remember it. Get it together, so dude. So the younger sister is like. Okay, so the older sister <laughs> thinks the younger sister is like weird and she wants her to be cool. So she like tries to wax her sister's vagina so that she'll get laid or whatever. Ooh. And <laughs> and oh, then the wax, right. the wax like gets stuck like on her vagina. Ah. And then so the sister's like, I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to oh. cut the wax out. And then so uh. like the wax off of the hair. Oh. It's not like off of her skin. Okay. Oh, okay. But and then uh. and then the, <laughs> the younger sister like freaks out and is like, don't. And then so she like kicks her. And then it accidentally slices the sister's finger off. A pair of scissors? Or like, I think it, I don't, yeah. Yeah, sure, I don't know. Somehow she got her finger chopped off. Yeah, she got her finger chopped off. She got her finger chopped off. Although it did not seem that, like, like, believable. But she gets It's in France. They have really sharp shit. So she she gets her finger cut off. They have sharp shit. Her sister passes out. And while her sister's passed out, she, like, wakes up. Like, I don't remember. I'm not going to tell the story. You tell the story. The sister, okay, what the fuck are their names? It's French names. 
A and B. I mean, we don't need a detailed synopsis. Yeah. Well, yeah, anyway, we so she broad stroke Sorry. In here. She ends up eating the finger, and the sister wakes up and sees it and is like, "What the fuck?" And then the, the she goes to the doctor with her family and sew it up, and then the sister says that the dog is the one that ate it, and then the sister takes her to the side of the road, which if you remember from the beginning of the movie. Beginning of the movie, the movie starts out with like this girl like running out in front of a car and making the car crash on this like deserted road. And then you see that her go up to the car and then that's what like you don't see what happens. And then she takes her sister to the road, makes this car crash and then starts like eating. The older sister starts eating the people and then the younger sister was like, what the fuck? And then so, yeah, basically. I'm just going to give away like the rest of it because yeah, we just need, to talk, just need to stop talking about it. Yes. So this family and then we don't like the mom, like the women in the family are like cannibals essentially, but like they That's don't know for I'm like sure an un, going. for an unexplained reason, but like yeah, they, they need it. to eat meat. And it's so hereditary. it's hereditary because the mother also eats meat. Well, she kicked it by becoming a vegetarian. Yeah, and they were trying to hide it from the girls. Uh, uh, they were trying to hide it from the girls. They're like they're like a desire to eat people by having them be vegetarians. Yeah. But they're like, and like the roommate, she eats the roommate. Yeah, she eats her roommate. after <laughs> after <laughs> fucking him like a bunch yeah, of times. Yeah, she like fucks her roommate and then finally eats him. And her sister, her older sister, takes the fall and gets arrested for it. And at the oh, end, no. at the end, you find that at the end you see the big reveal because she's having a convert like eating dinner with her dad. And her dad's like, I'm so sorry. And it basically gives it away. Like, you are. Can't, you're, you're fulfilling your yeah. destiny. Yeah. Also, child. they they had this thing like where they were they said that they were going to put the dog down. Because once you get the taste of blood, like you can't not have it. And then you see the dog at the end. Yeah. Like they because did, like they didn't actually they didn't put it down. Put it down because they knew that it wasn't true. What? They knew it wasn't what? true. They knew that the dog didn't wasn't the one that ate it. So like. Yeah. Uh, the dog didn't eat the finger. The yeah. dog didn't uh, eat the finger. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. It's like this weird. I'll have to check it out. It sounds interesting enough. It was pretty good. Yeah, it was really gross. Mm. Fucking eating people. Yeah. All right, Number Sam. Four. Let's let's hear one of yours. Bra. That was. Are we it. doing? I don't know what we're doing. This is all weird now. You can just do a different one. Okay, fine. It will work. I will choose. Fuck it. The beguiled, which was. A, it's a remake from a book. It was a book, and then it was a movie, and then this is the remake. And Sofia Coppola, which is one of my uh, favorite directors, directed there's it. There's name. And there's a bunch of big name actors and actresses: Colin Farrell, Nicole Kidman, Kirsten Dunst, Elle Fanning. There's names again. Um, who else? More names. I, I, think I that's thought I was going to hear Colin Farrell and Kirsten. <laughs> Dunst. Those are names. Yeah. Um. And it's essentially Civil War times, and it's like this boarding school kind of thing. For all ladies. For, for all ladies. Nicole Kidman's the um, like house mom, essentially. And there's like six or so, however many women there. Anyway, and this wounded soldier from... Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. I guess he's a Yankee soldier. Yeah. And they're in the Confed- they're in the South, so they're in the Confederate. So he's an enemy soldier. Like basically comes and like asks for like help because he's wounded, and then starts like fucking shit up because they haven't seen a man for a really long time. So everybody's like wants a piece of that ass, kind of. Yeah. But like they're trying to be like everybody's trying to compose themselves. And basically, he wins them over by helping them around their house, so they don't want to like turn them in anymore. And they're going to let keep him stay him. there. Let's keep Yeah, him. they're going to let him stay there and <laughs> shit. Because he doesn't want to go back and fight because he doesn't want to die, obviously. Uh, and he had that near-death experience by being wounded and all fucked up. So he doesn't want to go back to the war. And he likes it there. And then all this like sexual tension, all this shit happens. <sighs> and they want to fucking turn him in. Well, okay, so what happens is like Kirsten Dunst like, ends up he says that he's gonna like meet her that night and then he she sees him come out of Elle Fanning's room and then she like freaks out and like pushes him down the stairs and like breaks his leg off or like breaks his leg and then so 
Nicole Kidman has to amputate it. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. And then he like freaks out and is like, "You've." You bitch! Yeah, essentially, he's yeah. like, you guys all ruined and my fucking That sweet ass yeah. fucking leg. <laughs> yeah, and then the trailer kind of made it seem like something else was gonna happen, like something oh. like more was gonna happen with it that didn't, which I was yeah. kind of like bummed. I fucking about. hate movies like that. Mm-hmm. What comes at night, or it comes at night? <laughs> I'm gonna talk about that when it gets to it. But anyway, uh, yeah, the movie, de- the trailer definitely made the movie seem like they were like going to torture Colin Farrell or something. Yeah. It seemed it seemed like it was gonna be a lot t- more twisted and like darker. Yeah. But it ended up being just kind of pretty subtle. But he like has like finds a gun or whatever and starts like threatening them because they all, um, like he, they ruined his life essentially. But then Kirsten Dunst like is like in love with him and is like don't do it, blah blah blah. And then there's. One of the girls like picks mushrooms, and there's like a certain one that like is poisonous versus one that's not, and so the other people, the other ones, like conspire to like poison him by giving them Shit. these mushrooms, and then that ends up happening. Yeah, and then, and then that's like basically it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, beguiled. Yeah. All right, let's go. Keep on going. All right, Ian, give us your number three. This is like you said earlier, based on because I didn't see a bunch of movies this year. But when we watched the other night, I did like The Foreigner a good amount. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah. Jackie Chan, baby. That's why I was most interested to see it, because it was kind of like, I know it's kind of past the Taken area, post-Taken era, but still, I've always wanted to see, like, Jackie Chan in more of a, a serious movie. Yeah. And so I think he did, that was probably the best part about the movie, is yeah. how well he did his character. But I thought it was funny, just like, Nims. Yeah. Nims. Give me Nims. Give me Nims. Are you guys familiar with this one? Mm-hmm. Foreigner? Mm-hmm. I'm not familiar with it. So I, it's oh. like John Wick, but Jackie yeah. Chan. <laughs> taken Jackie Chan. So that yeah, that I is cool. Really, seeing like Jackie really Chan it. in a like a yeah, super it's, badass uh, role. Yeah, his daughter is a victim in like a bombing, yeah, a terrorist attack, and it was like turns out to be the fucking like IRA, like the uh, this Irish. I can what does it's it stand the, for? It's like the Irish Resistance Association. Yeah, yeah, like, like yeah. I, the Irish one. Britain out of their shit, you know, mm-hmm. which is like that was a pretty cool mm-hmm. pre- like premise. Like, there's something I mean, it's based I've, on that, I've never really, yeah, I've never really heard that much about it. Yeah, but I then, guess in like the 90s, it was huge, like yeah, they yeah. were fucking yeah. bombing shit, right? Yeah, and then like I always forgot to say, uh, Pierce Brosnan was pretty good in it. Yeah, yeah, Pierce Brosnan is like a big government official who is formally in the IRA and he's trying to like keep the peace between Britain and the and the Irish the IRA. And that's the only thing I didn't really like about the movie is it was mostly about him. Yeah. And Jackie yeah. Chan was like the secondary, like character. Yeah. It didn't have enough Jackie Chan in it. Yeah. That's what I kind it of should have been me more. Out. Yeah. Though it was kind of interesting when you found out that he was a uh, ex like special ops trained by the U.S. Well, obviously he was. If he kicks so much ass, <clears throat> he's gonna yeah. be fucking well, special ops be- something. Before I saw that part, I thought because he fled, he left from China after the war. Uh, and eventually made it over here after like losing most of his family. And I was thinking, well, maybe he was special ops for the Chinese, but then it kind of threw me a curveball. And they're like, no, he's special ops for the U.S. So I was like, huh. He's at the end of his pitiful rope. <laughs> I know. It was nice to see him in a serious movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that was a good one. That and he's like, you know, he's like, he's like 63, 65 at this point. So for him to be doing that. He's still so, kicking ass. Yeah. yeah. So I hope he does like eventually. He didn't, didn't he direct this or produce it or I something? I think he produced it. Yeah. But I hope he does like before he's like he's done. I hope he does like maybe a couple more stuff like this. I feel like it's kind of like his first ignition. Like he could probably be in something better. But this was a good first test for him. I think. Yeah, it does, definitely does seem time. It's about time for him to move to behind the camera. Mm-hmm. Be- before he does uh, quit uh, doing movies and kick the bucket. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> fucking die! <laughs> well, one thing I'd like to see, you know, him being like <clears throat> this. Uh, you know, martial arts um, action star throughout his, you know, th- throughout oh. years of movies. I'd like to see him be the next uh, uh, actor that plays uh, Pai Mei in a uh, martial arts movie. Who's Pai Mei? Uh, Pai Mei, uh, the easiest way to describe him was the Asian guy in Kill Bill. Oh, okay. Uh, but he's actually a uh, character that's been in kung fu movies. Kung fu? for like years like since kung fu movies came on the scenes and uh, uh before kung fu kung fu movies his uh, name was like uh 
Uh, it wasn't quite Pi Mei, but it was like Pi Magus or something, uh, who was actually very talent. Well, it's little is known about him, but what no, is known little about him, is known. What about is him. known about him? He was like a very talented uh, martial artist. Uh, I may have actually butchered the right name, but uh, I would like to see him being very prominent in martial arts and the uh, movie industry. Play Pai Mei is like maybe his last role when he has like gray hair. He's already got gray hair in this movie. Yeah, but I mean, like Pai Mei has white hair. Oh, okay. So like, any Pai Mei is really old in every movie he's in. Uh, well, not every movie he. As as the newer movies come out, he always plays an older person, and uh, in a couple of movies he dies, but he always seems to come back somehow. Um, that's part of his mysticism around him. So uh, it'd just be kind of cool. Just something I want to throw in there. Cool. All right, Fitz Horner. All right, Bass. Let's hear your number Love three Horner. or two or one or whatever you got left. So I got a number three and a one left. Um, my number two was John Wick, uh, chapter two. I'm going to say uh, my number three pick is Dunkirk. Ooh, that's yeah. one of my letdowns. It's Disappointing. One Disappointed me. There, so going into it, it was a little bit of a disappointment compared to what I thought was going to be in the movie. But the cinematography uh, and the emotion in it was just amazing. I heard um, the sound design was pretty great. Yeah, so what they did was they used... The th- sound design, uh, the sound design to really convey emotion. So it's a movie you really wanted to th- see in the theaters because uh, they would have sounds so loud that it actually kind of almost hurt or made you cringe, which was the whole point of it because they were trying to convey that uh, emotion of uh, pain and fear. You know, fear of the next loud noise, but just like for us, fear of the next loud noise. But in the movie, fear. You know, and knowing that that loud noise is always around the corner that's going to make you kind of cringe a little bit and you, you just don't want to see it. And that's what the the Nazi army was right there the whole time um, around the corner. Uh, it's They did a really good job, I thought, of conveying emotion. <laughs> yeah, I just thought it was kind of anticlimactic. Yeah. And, I mean, I love, I like how Chris Nolan does storytelling, like, out of order, but I do feel like it kind of hurt the film in this case. Yeah, I did. When I first saw it in theaters, I didn't realize the out and order storytelling until I uh, watched it a couple times after the theaters. And I noticed like some of the scenes were out of order. And I was like, huh, which I, I kind of see why I did it, huh. but I think it would have just been better if he would have just done those parts in order. Well, that's I his thing. That's that. his fucking, yeah, that's his, that's his calling card. But the, um, my whole thing is why it was very anticlimactic. Was because, excuse me, uh, was because, I mean, it's going off of what actually happened. I'm not talking about that. I mean, I'm talking about, like, because there was some cool moments with, like, the air fighters and shit. Yeah. And that kind of came in the middle of the movie, you know? I don't know. It just, there wasn't, a, there wasn't a lot of tension towards the end because the beach, they don't really show the beach filled with all these British soldiers very much. Like no. it's supposed to be packed with like hundreds of thousands, and I never got that. I never got that fucking idea. Like that, there's hundreds of thousands of these, of these guys stranded on this beach. It just, True. I, just, I just didn't see enough of it. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it could have showed it a little more. I, uh, I agree with that. It looked great. Definitely had a kind of an it's fo- it follows feel to it, uh, just because. What? Like the horror movie? It no. Okay, so like it's. Something's always there, uh, looming over you. Yeah, that's you what never the Nazi You can't get away from it. And um, these people, like, just one of the um, one of the lines is like, "You can almost see home." You know? Yeah, they're right there. Yeah, it was cool. It was a it was a nice. Fr- it's like a unique hor- uh, war movie, which is cool. It was a nice. It was good. It is a good story of World War Two, and it's cool to see it. Um, on the big screen, you know, like not about D Day for a change, you know. All right, Dunkirk, I'll go now. My number three, Hello. the big sick. The big sick. Yeah. I don't even think I've heard of this one. I haven't seen it. It's yet. like I've a, it. it's a comedy, kind of a romantic comedy. Does the chick die? 
No. The dude dies? No. Nobody dies. Spoilers. <laughs> I heard that they did it. I thought that it's a uh, Camille. I can't read my handwriting, um, so I'm not going to not pronounce your last name. But he's in Silicon Valley. He's uh, the Indian guy. He's in Portlandia. Is he in a Portlandia? Lot. A lot. Like just a recurring character, not one of the main Yeah. Ones. Oh, no, he's, he's from Pakistan, not India. Sorry. But he's really fucking funny. And this is this is a, a, based on the true story of how he met his wife. And oh, he, wait a minute. I've seen the commercials. Yeah, he made yeah. a movie about like how they met. But like they started dating... They got they get in this big fight because his mom's trying to set him up with Pakistani women, and she finds like a box where he keeps all the pictures of all these women his mom tries to set him up with. So they get in this big fight. They don't talk for like a week, and then she gets like this super rare like infection, and they like put her in a coma, and he's like uh, they call him for some reason to come to the hospital, and then her parents show up, and it's Ray Romano and Holly Hunter, two great Ray Romano, yeah, like really, yeah. <laughs> Two great Dang. actors and like, and it's them like fucking bonding over this shitty thing that happens because like she's like keeps getting worse and they can't figure out what's wrong, and they're all like trying to cope with it and they kind of like come together and become friends, and it's just really funny. It's sad. You get a nice gambit of emotions, and it's a true story. Who doesn't love a fucking true story? And it Sounds was, it was a really surprising one for me. Yeah, yeah. She didn't die. Well, just because I watched it out, like on a whim, just because of Camille. Mm-hmm. And you thought it was gonna be like cheesy or something. Well, I didn't really know what to expect, but I just, you know, it's one of those movies you just watch and you're like, man, I really fucking like that. Yeah, that's cool. But no, she does not die. She comes through. Somebody told me that she did, so now I'm mad. Well, you was lied to. Misinformation. And then they got married after that in real life. Sweet. Fake Is that news. The actor, actress. Fake news. No, oh. Camille. It's it's it actually happened like that's how they met and shit, but the actress isn't his real wife. Okay, because I guess his real wife wife is not an actress. That's my number three. Big sick. Check it out. Big three. Big three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, my number three, not such a popular movie, uh, among other people in the closet. <sighs> also on my list. Oh, another another overlap here. Another. The rest o- of ours are overlapped. Oh are shit! They? Yeah, because then we have two for number one. Oh, that's true. So yeah, the rest of ours are overlapped. That'll save on some splaining. Uh, it comes at night. Ooh. Uh, a, yeah, the, the trailer. Movie. The trailer definitely makes you believe that the There's movie something. is going to be like a monster. another monster movie. But the movie ends up being a psychological thriller, psychological thriller. But also it ends up being uh, more about a virus. You don't really get too much background on what's happening, but there's a virus spreading. I got that there was a virus from the trailers. Like I, I figured it was like apocalypse yeah, that's virus. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, shit, I keep hitting the mic. Sorry. Stop. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, there's a virus. Uh, there's. Uh, the main character, fuck, I forget his name. Anyway, he's taking care of his family in this remote cabin out in the woods that they have all, like, locked up um, one night somewhat. So it, it's hit the main character, his wife, and his son. And then they burn the grandpa. Oh, and they burn the grandpa. <laughs> they start the movie out. Yeah, the movie yeah. starts out pretty intense right off the bat. Yeah. They have to fucking burn their grandpa. Um, Bye, grandpa. <laughs> because he becomes because he becomes infected, so it gives you a little taste of like what the fucking or how serious this virus is. And um, so anyway, eventually some guy breaks into their house to try and get water for his family. Um, they end up taking his family in uh, as like a nice gesture, um, but it like sets in this paranoia where they think that. This family might be infected. Anyway, all this paranoia and tension and um, yeah, ends up like derailing and they end up fucking and set, uh, they end up killing this family. And I guess like the real monster in this movie is like paranoia mm-hmm. when put into this situation. And yeah, yeah they're like. And that's what I thought that was interesting about the movie is that the the monsters of the movie end up actually being 
uh, the, the people, the peep, the heroes, but the paranoia. I did get really peaked. I mean, bend in when the dog was barking or something. I was like, there's actually something out there. This dog. Yeah, they fuck. I mean, it was good tension, but it wasn't a bad movie. It was good tension building. Um, I didn't. The, I didn't think the acting was very good. I liked the acting. Oh. I liked the sun a lot. Yeah, the sun was. Yeah, he yeah, was. He good. made. He made the made the movie for me. I I, I really like the sequences with the sun and his dreams and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I really like how they blurred the line between what was real. I like and how they're his dream. Yeah. Like one of their main center things was like the red door. I thought that yeah. was that was, that was a kind yeah. Of cool yeah, it was shot idea. really well. Yeah, it was yeah. The really cinematography well. that was also a big thing for me. Oh, and why I liked the movie. It just really liked. I mean, it was beautifully shot. It looked mm-hmm. awesome. Um. But yeah, and I, I liked, like I said, I liked the way they blurred the line between what was the son's dreams and what was reality. And I also just liked kind of how like subtly it ended. I thought the the shot at the end after like you figure out that the son is in fact infected, uh, and they're and, all infected. Yeah, and yeah, all that shit for nothing. All yeah. that shit for nothing. Mm-hmm. Like they just killed all these people for nothing. And it they was were just, infected though. Yeah, but they didn't want them to leave because they knew where they were. And they wanted to take their goats and shit with them. So they were being huge assholes about making them. They were just going to kill them because they knew where their house was. I mean, they did suspect they were infected. And they were using that as an excuse to kill them. Because they just wanted to leave. They were like, just let us leave. Yeah. But they said no because they wanted to take half their shit. Yeah. And they knew where they were. And they were huge dicks. about. So basically they got what they had coming. Right. I didn't realize that. Or yeah. maybe I forgot that. I thought that yeah, they just I mean, killed them because I I thought that they thought that the other people were going to like bring back more people. What? Like she's afraid that they're going to bring back more people. That means less supplies because there's more people. No, wait. That was toward the beginning. Okay, yeah. Because they mean, didn't want to bring him in. And yeah. that was a, it was a cool moment when they're talking about killing him and the kid's like, no, can't we just let him go? He's like, no, they know where we are. Like, you don't know what people are capable of when they're desperate yeah. as they're getting and desperate. That, exactly. And that's the entire, like, like point in the movie. They kill that little kid. That part was pretty intense. Yeah, the shit well, was so fucked up. That's what I like to say. That was the most intense part of it for me. It's just, like, how quick it happens. She's just, the wife's just like, kill me. And he's just like, pow. Yeah, yeah I mean, it <laughs> was super fucked it. up. And then at the end, like, after their boy dies, like, that, that last shot of <clears throat> the main like father and mother just point? like just staring at each other at the fucking dinner table not saying shit because they like, know they're gonna die from the infection well not only that they just they're like oh yeah did sitting there shit. like just reflecting on all the fucking horrible shit they just killed the family mm-hmm. their son just died just this in- ter- terrible situation they are and then they just like really uh have this like long like really kind of like too long shot of them just staring at each other silently, and it just like really fucking. Do you have to let it linger? Yeah, it just yeah, it just it drives that point home, and I, I like left to, the theater with chills from that to. shot. Yeah, that, uh, it was fucking sad. Yeah, it was super sad. The whole sad, like super last intense. like fifteen yeah. minutes was just. Yeah, I just thought it was kind of an interesting. Yeah, it was a good payoff. Uh, I thought it was like a a, re- a refreshing horror, f- like a refreshing change of pace from like the typical jump scare horror. This was yeah. more subtle mm-hmm. and kind of artfully done. In my opinion, yeah, um, yeah, just something a little different. I just, I, I understand that like it was marketed as a monster yeah. movie, and that's kind of a letdown. It uh, did leave a. That's the only reason it left a bad taste in my mouth because I was. It's one of those times where you're sitting there waiting for something to happen, right? And it doesn't. Mm-hmm. It was uh, a lot like that movie Z for Zachariah. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Mm-mm. It had kind of a similar plot to that film. But that one was more about jealousy and over paranoia. Mm. Well, if it makes you feel any better, Ben, you were at the <clears throat> movies with me the other day and you saw the commercial for that movie yeah. coming out. That Krasinski the, movie? Be silent. I, yeah. I think it could be good. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll go see it and see what happens. I'm interested to see it. I just want to see it because it's a horror movie. Well, that is like it's an and entire movie without like it could be like a, a long movie without in barely any dialogue. And I've never really seen a movie like that. Yeah. This that one do, looks like it's gonna be. It comes at night, but with monsters. Yeah, that's what I always think. That's why I was. Yeah, gonna, it does kind of yeah. look like that. Because I was gonna bring that up and ask if you've seen commercials for that new one with John Kransky. Yeah, I have. What's yeah. it called? And it's uh, like it's silent. Silent. silent place or some silent shit. Place. A silent place. Dude, that was the one I was trying to tell you in the theater. That that fucking uh, score they use in that trailer is like the from same one movie. from Alien Covenant. It is. It's that one I was talking about earlier with like when the shit starts going down. It's like. Da-na. It's like this. I'm telling you, it's the same fucking one. It comes at night, number three. 
Very good. Number whatever. I don't know where it landed on mine. All right, let's get to the number twos, y'all. Are you throwing one out? I can. How many um, you got? You probably got like one left now, right? I have two left. I All right, think. yeah, let's see. Let's see. What, yeah, just, let's see. So get out. Yeah, which is also my number okay, two. Okay, throw back. Forgot about that. Yeah. Throw back to like the beginning of this year. I forgot that this that was this yeah. year. Who hasn't seen this? Everybody's no, seen no. it. Everyone's seen it. I only yeah. saw. Well, I only saw it like I don't know, like two two or three weeks ago. Yeah. Oh no, really? No. Yeah. Me and Garrett finally like saw it. It was on TV, and we saw. I finally sat down and watched nice. it. It was really good. Yeah. Another um, another example of why this was like a good year for horror. It was a really good year for horror. In my then opinion. you know, every, it just surprised everyone with Jordan Peele. I know. Yeah, Jordan, yeah that that was Jordan crazy. Peele. Yeah. But he still kept the comedy side with his friend, which I loved his friend yeah. in that movie. He's yeah, like, yeah, there are definitely comedic elements, and I think that's what makes the movie really and good. And it's weird because they worked it so well. Yeah, I know. It never it never felt like this movie does not feel like a horror comedy to me. You know what yeah. I mean? Like there are it's very they're like funny elements in the movie, but it didn't seem like there's a no like comedy. written out jokes really. Mm-hmm. Didn't um, they label but it? But like as a the comedy? thing No. I know. Okay. The thing I love about this movie is like this movie to me feels like a modern day uh, like Night of the Living Dead, like type movie, you know, like a modern day, like horror kind of classic, like a movie that's horror, but also has like such like a p- strong social commentary. Yeah. That oh yeah. Could be like you know, yeah. Obviously, it's a huge social commentary, but yeah. like it just a little it, bit more blatant. A little more blatant than Night of the Living Dead, obviously, but oh, well, a lot more blatant. But yeah. uh, obviously, it just felt like kind of like a modern day horror classic it's about black culture appropriation right that's the that's the social connection and just like white people's kind of like over fascinate like like, white people trying to overcompensate like racism in a way by like being coming obsessed with black culture Mm, and like a Overly yeah. positive rather way, but like, that it in itself is rather like, than just be like, like they, they don't like black people because they don't like, but rather they would want to be them. It's yeah. kind exactly. of where they, yeah, they they think they're superior. Overcom- yeah. yeah, they're overcompensating by like, yeah, for sure. Saying, yeah. I did yeah. Th- think they had a lot of good like shot scenes, like the part when the movie like because there's times in this movie I was watching, I was just like, no, 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 <laughs> like I've just already been gone. But like the part that really got me is when she, they go, he goes upstairs, all of a sudden all the white people just like stop. Mm-hmm. And they just like look up at the ceiling. I was like, oh, uh, yeah, that was yeah. kind of creepy. That was a really weird. Yeah, I'm... I yeah, I really like those parts. And I got it right Weary. away, like in the part when like you know she's with her boyfriend and all the family and stuffs over, and he's like, she's just showing this guy off. They're they're gonna auction on this guy, aren't they? And then yeah. they're like playing bingo. I was like, I knew it. Yeah, and then they do. Yeah. The thing I love about this movie is, uh, like when the main character just starts fucking like the. I thought it was like such a great moment of like in this movie where he starts like fucking up all the people. In That's the what family I was hoping towards the yeah. end because it's like it's that fucking great payoff. Like if like mm-hmm. in like a horror movie when you want the character to do something and they actually fucking. Yeah. That's do what it. I guess like they when I was watching, he's like, fucking. I hope he kills everyone. Here. <laughs> yeah, I hope then, he kills them all. Yeah, and then he fucking does, and then you're just like, because like mm-hmm. in the movie, it was great in the movie theaters. Like when he started doing that, people were just like fucking cheering. Yeah, <laughs> they're like fuck yeah. Because yeah, I remember like yeah. Simon Hannah said yeah. the same thing. Yeah, when they saw it in theaters. Is uh the cast like it was a wide cast variety. Right. Like the guy, the, the the blind guy, he was the dude from Dodgeball. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was an odd. Yeah, it was and an then. Odd role um, for him. Then the dad, did you ever see a, what's the really bad horror comedy by Josh Whedon? You know, the Cabin in the Woods or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he's the dad from Step? No, the the dad in this movie, he's like the guy that gets killed by the mermaid. Oh, yeah. The other no, guy. that's right. He I is like, in that movie. Yeah, yeah. I like Cabin in the Woods. I mean, it's good for a horror comedy for what it is and yeah. stuff. I liked it too. I thought it was good. He's the weasel guy from Billy Madison. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Something. I never watched Billy Madison. Something cool about this movie uh, <clears throat> I saw recently, uh, Jordan Peele was answering questions I about the that. movie. Yeah, the theories. Yeah, the, the, theories they had. the theories and stuff, Here's and like answering them and explaining them and like agreeing or disagreeing with them and like kind of helping give you some ideas behind certain aspects of the movie. And uh, I would highly recommend watching it. I thought it was pretty good. And uh, um, definitely, I went back and watched a few parts after that. Or watch the movie yeah, just of, for a, a few parts. Mm-hmm. Um, just be like, oh, okay, now I get the point he was trying to make with this yeah. or why that item was placed there or something. Yeah, it just it just goes to show how like talented Jordan Peele is and mm-hmm. how much of like 
just like a fucking great filmmaker. Make Akira. I died. I definitely thought at the very end, and I was just like, when his friend shows up, I was like, he's gonna go to jail. I definitely thought he was gonna go yeah, to jail. Yeah, right it's like that end. would be some shit. Yeah, 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 because I already knew when she's like, she shot, and you know, that she was be- like, help me. I was like. <clears throat> Hey, it's gonna be black man, a couple yeah. dead white people. Like, yeah. He's gonna go to jail. And I'm just like, don't really let that how it ends. Then it's his friend. It's like, okay, good. Yeah, because and that and that and that definitely. Uh, That's probably definitely a lot of such people. a huge social thing too. Mm-hmm. Is like when when the cops show up. It's typically in a movie where it's like a relief. But like mm-hmm. when the cops showed up, everyone gasped in the movie theater. Like, oh shit, mm-hmm. you know. So that's just like you know nail on the head. But mm-hmm. like like really trying to make you reflect on that. There's just a lot of little things in this movie, like. In the very beginning, you know, when the cop pulls him over and, like, asks for his ID, and then the, his girlfriend starts arguing, he's like, well, why do you need his ID? He wasn't driving. It's yeah. because she's trying to cover up a paper trail. Yeah. Yeah. Because the cops will know that she was with him. Oh, yeah. 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 See, that's, yeah, there's so many things that you kind of miss. Yeah. You know, and, like, what you said, like, the thing that saved him in the end was uh, picking the cotton mm, yeah, out, out of the, the chair. The, the chair. Yeah, put like, it in picking was, cotton was... I, I didn't, thought I that was, that. like, so in your face. Yeah, well, I liked I just, that I, part, but I... Thought it was obvious. It was just that wasn't that's obvious to me. I like didn't. I just comment. didn't catch that. And then, like the one part of the movie, I knew if I was like, I would have like left. Is like when you're out there smoking a cigarette and you know, just the man comes running at you like full speed <laughs> yeah. with that face. I'm like, that's not normal. Nah, no, that's, that's when that's... you get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get, get out. Yeah, because get out. What's cool is that that's the you know that's the grandpa or whatever. Yeah. And the reason why he put his brain in there is because like they said earlier in the film, he raced against Jesse Jackson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and lost. He, yeah. Yeah. And so at the very end, Jordan P. almost put it in there when he, like, you know, he tackles him at the very end. And he's almost going to say, I got you, Jesse. I got you. (laughs) Oh, man. At the very end when he tackles him. Yeah. So I thought it was just, like, a cool alludance in the movies, a lot of them. Yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of meaning to it. Is it, is the mom's name Catherine Keener? Kathleen well, like, Her real name? Or? Like the, yeah, the real name. Oh, you're talking about the mom, the, the act- hypnotist? Yeah, the actress. Oh, okay. I don't, sure. I just remember she was in a 40 year old virgin. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that lady is so. That lady is in another so, movie as well. Mm-hmm. That lady is so good at playing like a fucked up character. Yeah. Because she was in um, an American crime with Ellen Page and mm-hmm. she was like over the top fucked mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. in that movie. And then she just. Now, because of that movie, is like so creepy to me, yeah, and like creepy. so it like worked really well. But it's like effortless. It's kind of like yeah, like, yeah. Just I'm like glad. her raspy voice and her just like see. Yeah. I get where you're coming from. Much. Yeah. yeah, because that's like out of all the characters, you know, like you love, like you hate, but you know, it's a good movie. I, I didn't like. I at least liked her the most. Like as a character, I was just like, you're a bitch. I hate you. Man. Yeah, <laughs> because like at the very end, when the she's main like, character, man, like, and she gets the teacup. I was like, knock that shit over. <laughs> she can't get able to do shit. If yeah, not, he just slams it to the side. He's like, yeah. What are you gonna do now? Well, man, <laughs> he ain't gonna main, do anything. That main character, he is—I don't know what his name is, but uh, yeah, he he's such good. a good fucking actor. Yeah, just he was his good eyes, actor. man. Just yeah. his, like his fucking looks were yeah. just like so perfect. And, like, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, great actor, great yeah. movie, good one. That's pretty good. Bass, what do you got? What's your number one? My number one film is Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Ooh, I actually hear that is really good. I've never seen it. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Either. Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen the original Blade Runner. Either. I heard, yeah, I heard it was good. Wait, did did, did I see it with you, Ben? No, I haven't seen it. You saw it with, um, oh, I saw it with uh, Mike and Wilkerson. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to see it. I haven't seen it. Yet. It was probably the best movie I've seen all year. And you're um, a huge science science fiction guy. Yeah, I really do like science fiction. the The cinematography, amazing. The score, amazing. The sound. Amazing. Ridley Scott CG Wait, the CG oh, yeah oh, no. the CG fucking amazing and it and Ridley Scott when asked is this in the same universe as Aliens never really said yes or no she just said it quite Isn't possibly Waylon could Corp? be Waylon Yutani's like they show yeah. it in there right Waylon's in there uh, that's like one of the main groups in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so like you got that on top of that, like oh Ridley Scott didn't direct twenty forty nine. Did he do the old Blade Runner though? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. But still, like the movie's freaking great. They have a freaking the, great. They, they have a very good balanced amount of so, uh. What is like? I always wonder because I know like because in the trailer and stuff, it's like oh I had I had your job and when what is exactly their job? I can't they remember. hunt down like uh. Synthetics that need to be shut down. Oh, they look like humans, so like kind of like an alien, like you know the androids they hunt those down. Yeah, but yeah, this movie, this movie I thought was great. 
Um, How was Harrison Ford? There, he was. At first, he seemed kind of like a a prick, but then uh, you get to know. Uh, well, the new character, because you already know about him from the first movie, but the the new guy that's doing his old job, Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling uh, gets to know him, and they kind of bond and build this, yeah, kind of. And uh, there's like a good balance of amount of screen time for him, Ryan Gosling. Um, and then you the know, Joker, Jared Leto was in this too, wasn't he? Yeah. He was a Jared Le- Leto is in it, <coughs> in charge of the Waylon Corporation. He no, he's not. It's not. There, it's just a cameo, I think, of Waylon Utani. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then um, he designs the synthetics, Jared yeah. Leto, oh, in the I movie. Know, he's all robotic and stuff like that. Yeah, and then uh, shit. He's there's his shit. lackey, the girl, and then uh, what's really cool is there's this uh, really this is this uh girl that plays a like a artificial person um that could be like projected uh and is the wife to our main character um but she's like not really she's real in the sense that she's uh she has um memories of the times of between with her and Ryan Gosling but she's like AI so she's like an AI computer uh that is its own th- consciousness and uh he bought he gets this tool from Wayland that allows him to carry him carry not Wayland huh not Wayland uh, Wayland <laughs> I uh, think I, was, I haven't seen it from it's either in the original Blade Runner yeah. or the new one there's like a picture of yeah. Wayland Itani in the background but uh uh so this little stick allows Ryan Gosling to take his artificial wife you know with him wherever he goes and he gets that and like it's so heartbreaking i don't want to really spoil it because it's, it's a movie that i don't want to spoil for you guys but there's a part that's like really heartbreaking so it's like cortana from halo. yeah it's like cortana from halo but it's like a lot more high tech and uh she like does some like she, the ai has emotions for him um like that's how advanced ai has gotten in this universe and like she does some stuff um, for him, like hiring a uh, this part isn't really important, but hires a uh, a uh, street girl to come up and like they can, she can like motion track her movement to transpose her form onto her, uh, so he could like have a night, um, a dinner and dance and stuff like with a physical with her like if she was a physical person, um, it was just very cool and then uh. Uh, about three quarters of the way through the movie, you find out something very, very, very um, important to the plot. Um, and then it comes back around at the very end. Um, that gives you a very satisfying or a fairly satisfying end to the movie. Um, because there's a few things that they had to do, but kind of make you feel sad because they had to do it uh, to get the movie ending where they want to. But. Yeah, I know I'm adding a lot of vague stuff. <laughs> I you a lot guys have seen things. the movie, and yeah, I'm I think it's a movie I wouldn't want to ruin spoil. for you guys. Yeah, I want to watch it for sure. All right, Ben, let's hear that number one. My, my number one was Alien Covenant. Oh, that's right, that's right. But my number two is Baby Driver. Oh, from, oh yeah, never I, saw knew I, knew, I knew this was going to be on your list. From my favorite director, oh, Edgar Wright, who can do no wrong. He's the I greatest. Except higher Kevin Spacey. <laughs> yeah, sucks to win. You know. <laughs> sucks too because Kevin Spacey is pretty good in the movie, but then but he... it's okay. He's gay. <laughs> 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 but no, uh, so yeah, Edgar Wright, Baby Driver, his first like big mainstream like big budget studio success. Um, but he has been great way before that. But it's cool because like it's it's definitely more of a uh, style over substance film. It's kind of like a heist movie focused on the getaway driver, which is the type of movies that I don't really get into. But this one is is awesome because the whole script was written around the soundtrack for the film, and it took him like two or three years to write this, or maybe even longer. I can't remember. But he would find a song he really liked, and he would write scenes around that song. So there's like parts of the movie. Is that, that 
what it comes around to when he has headphones. Is that what? It's, yeah, yeah, he get he got in a car accident as a kid, and he has tinnitus, and he's constantly. And his parents, like his mom, was a singer, and she like, gave him an iPod uh, right before they died for his birthday, and he like drowns out the tinnitus by um, playing music. And he also does his getaways like to certain songs, mm-hmm. and like all the action is synced up to music. It's fucking incredible stylistically, and like the way he. Uh, he uses color in films to like color code different characters, or, and then like, w- like what side of like good and evil they're on. Like their colors will change and shit. It's fucking incredible. Like set design is down to last detail. It's like Blade Runner or fucking Get Out. Like how it's everything is everything. Th- everything has yeah, everything is thought, is thought of. Yeah, and choreographed awesomely. Everything has a purpose. I really liked the that guy and girl combo. Yeah, they were pretty they, good. They, it was it was a little shallow, but yeah, I mean it was a little shallow. It but you know, at one point when they talk about how much they love each other and like they're they're not really actually bad bad guys. They're just kind of trying to make a living. Yeah, he's just trying to I get out. Kind of good. Get out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, great performances all around. Great cast. Who is it? Kevin Spacey, the main guy. He's um, the he's the mob boss. I mean, and, t- and shit too. Like he takes like tropes yeah, from like how this mob boss should be, and it's kind of flips it on its head. And then Jamie Foxx is also in it, right? Jamie Foxx was in it. And he was great. John Hamm, I love fucking John Hamm. Cast John it? Hamm as new Batman. Yeah, I'd be yeah. Like that. yeah, he wants the role. Give it to him. Dude, that would be a good Batman. Yeah. I've been saying for you. Batman for the first time. Yeah, and now he's in like really good shape too. John Hamm. Well, he's like way like thin. He's got the jaw, dude. Is Mad Men yeah. still going? I'm gonna assume Mad Men's over. I just yeah. never saw it. Yeah, I always thought he'd make a good Harvey Dent, but being I can see him that. as that? Tommy Two Face, the Two Face. I can Lord, see that though. He yeah, would be a good he'd be a sick man. Yeah, he was. His face had melted off. Yeah. yeah, he was great. John Hamm was great. Um, even the 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 kid whose baby I forget is Ansel Elgort or something. He was okay. He had some kind of stale. A line delivery things. That's what you fucking call him. I don't know. John Berthnall was in it for a second. He's all right. But uh, yeah, action packed fun. It is a kind of generic, like a heist type of deal. But the fucking the style, like the way it's done is fucking awesome. And how it's choreographed with these built around the soundtrack is why I love it. And I would never hate it because I love Edgar Wright. So much. Boom. There you have Boom. it. Boom. Baby driver number two. Do you guys have any more? Yeah, Maybe yeah. We, we have, have one the more. same last one. We have the so. same last one. Number one. Our number one, my favorite movie I've seen this year for a lot of reasons. I'll try to keep this whole spiel pretty short because we've been talking for a while. But my favorite movie of the year was Mother. Mother. Mm. Mother. Uh, oh, it's I'm trying to remember. With an exclamation point. With Jennifer Lawrence. Um, this movie was... Fu- fucking crazy for one uh two it's like it's i don't know you it's hard i mean i think it was marketed as like a horror thriller but it's kind of like i don't even think you can put it in that box it's just kind of its own thing in a lot of ways which it was really refreshing to see something like new especially coming out of hollywood something like so new and like bold with so many big names in it. So with so many big names in it and it's like i feel like it was such a risky film um because the main reason is there's not like the entire movie is just a metaphor. It's not really like a conventional storytelling at all. And play like the movie feels more like a play than like an actual movie. Um, but the main synopsis, I guess, is Jennifer Lawrence is married to what's the actor's name? I can't pronounce it. He was in uh, He's No the, Country for Old Men, right? Yeah. He, is he the crazy guy that shoots people with a yeah. shotgun? Sugar. Yeah. Sugar, I don't um, remember saying. <laughs> isn't he the dude from Walking Dead? Is that a different no, guy? Javier Bardem. Bardern? Oh, you, you think Bardem. it was Jeffrey Dean Morgan? Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I get this <laughs> he guy. does look. Yeah, like they do him. look similar. Javier. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Uh, it's got fucking Michelle amazing Pfeiffer. voice he's got. Yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer, Ed Harris, Kristen you know, Wiig. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot she's in it. Anyway, so Jennifer Lawrence is uh, married to Javier. They are rebuilding his. Is it his childhood house? I'm pretty oh. sure it's supposed to be his like childhood house or something. Maybe with his anyway, old wife. Basically, you're set up to th- to yeah. You're set up to think that this house was ruined in a house fire. Uh, and Jennifer Lawrence is basically like rebuilding this house 
to exactly to how it was before the fire for her husband. Uh, who's a writer. Who's a writer, and he doesn't really have time to do it because he's really trying to get in his zone and write something new for the people. Um, the people. And he's having like a lot of writer's block and all. You're, you, I don't, you're not really sure why, but yeah, he's just having a lot of writer's block. Um, and eventually Michelle, or no, Ed Harris is like a traveler and he needs like a place to stay. So he stays there and, um, uh, the husband Javier and Ed Harris, like those characters like hit it off and eventually, uh, his wife, Michelle Pfeiffer comes, uh, and they're kind of just like overstaying their welcome and kind of like intruding and Jennifer Lawrence is like, kind of like thrown off by this she's like why the fuck are you letting these people just stay here you don't know who these people are they're strangers and uh javier's just kind of like what they're great i love having them here forget about it he's definitely like a people pleaser yeah he's a people pleaser and jennifer lawrence is like why are you letting them stay we're trying to you're trying to write i'm trying to rebuild this house they're kind of overstaying their welcome yeah um as the film progresses they're like kids end up coming and they just continually are like more and more people are like coming into this house. Well, so the kids Wait, come. Uh, never mind. I was just thinking of realizing. I remember what this movie is now because I remember yeah. they look outside and there's just a bunch of people. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the kids come and then. So the Ed Harris's character you find out is like dying. And he's like a he had been like a big fan of Javier's like work for a while. Mm, and that's right, that's right. yeah. And so but you find out that he's dying and then. One kid comes with, the, and then the other kid comes, and like they, they start getting in this like really heated argument about the will, and then, like I think the older one ends up killing the other one, like yeah. on accident, yeah, and, and this, then like, crazy scuffle. Yeah, and yeah, just, in the house, in the house, and then like the entire thing takes place in the house. Yeah, and so like you never see any. Where else? You never see the outside yeah. world. And so why other people, so many people start coming is for some reason they like hold the funeral service there or like just for a the mom- brother that for died. the brother that died. And I don't know what I liked about this movie is that everything happened like so quickly. Yeah. And it didn't seem like it was that long since like the whole thing happened. And then the like everybody except Jennifer Lawrence like left the house to take the other guy to the hospital and he ended up dying in the hospital i guess and then the they came they come back and then <coughs> the funeral service happens and then that shit just like gets out of hand and so many people start coming and like being and then, disrespectful to the house yeah they're breaking shit in the house they start taking shit from the house they start taking the house apart and like the house is like is that that part or was that the second part well, they're, they're, yeah, they're just being super disrespectful yeah. for the house. I think I'm rushing the story, but they're being super disrespectful to the house. They're not listening to Jennifer Lawrence. Like, Jennifer Lawrence is like, what are you guys doing? You're, like, fucking I'm trying to rebuild this house. Like, what the fuck are you guys doing? And no one's listening to it, and they're just, like, laughing at her. They're like, who the fuck are you? Like, Yeah, like, uh, we're at this, like, funeral service. That's what this is. Like, like we could give a fuck about you. Yeah, basically. And they're being super disrespectful. And Jennifer Lawrence, like, all the while is like, why is this fucking happening? What the fuck is even going on? And you're also thinking that, too, because all yeah. this shit's going down. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? You yeah. know, because, like, all these people came out of nowhere. It's getting crazy. Uh, eventually, you find out that uh, Jennifer Lawrence is pregnant. No, nope, no, nope, not well, yet. Okay, well, I, yeah, you, yeah, you should tell because well, I'm gonna fuck this all up. Okay, so eventually, basically, they leave. Everybody leaves, and then you kind of like get to take like a little break, like breath, and then you're like, if things are good again. Things are okay, and then they get to break, start rebuilding the house again. Well, and he's writing. No, I was gonna say that they have like this <laughs> breakthrough where she's like. You do everything for everybody else, but you can't even do one thing for me. Because, like, there's this whole thing about how they don't have children, but she wants children, but he doesn't want children, like, apparently. Or, like, he doesn't have time for children. And so you can't do this one thing for me, which is, like, he, like, couldn't have sex with her. Like, he never had sex with her or whatever for whatever reason. And then they finally do. And then they wake up and then she's like, I'm pregnant. He ends up like writing again because he hadn't written a word since that happened or since like 
the beginning of the film and then he start he writes like this masterpiece basically and then like shares it with her mm-hmm. but then like she and like it's like this really personal thing with like how she's like the mother of his like new kid or whatever and then but then she finds out that like he had already like shared it with so many other people and then like a publisher like a publisher his parents like or not his parents but like the their their family i guess and then all at once again people start coming to the house and like for like a book signing or whatever because they like everyone starts loving the work and all these people coming out of the woodworks because they love the work so much it's like this like the best thing that's ever been written yeah uh and eventually there's just like so many fucking people in the house again yeah and this is this time at this point it gets chaotic and people are just like they love the work so much so they want a memento from the house so they just start taking the house apart because they love him so much and eventually jennifer lawrence uh has the baby yeah so like people are like but she's like pregnant she's like about to give birth or whatever but people are like fucking hitting her like almost like trampling her because there, there's so many people and then she like somebody takes her into a room and then she ends up having the baby. Yeah. And then she, like, wouldn't let Javier, like, hold the baby until um, he mm-hmm. makes all the all people the people, go. people go away. And he wouldn't. And then she ends up like, falling. The people love yeah. me. He's like, the this is what I've me. always wanted. The people fucking love me. I yeah. this masterpiece. Yeah. And so she was, like, she was holding the baby. And she was like, I'm not giving it to you until you. And she ends up falling asleep for, like, a split second. And then she, like, wakes up, like, after, like, a split second. And then he already, like, in that time, he already had taken the baby and was, like, showing the baby to, like, all these people. And they started, like, cheering and everything. Like, there's this huge crowd of people somehow. Huge, within like, their overwhelmingly house. <laughs> huge crowd of people. Yeah. And then they eventually... They like, like they they are like crowd surfing the fucking baby, yeah. and then the baby's like it's a fresh born baby, and the baby so they're not like supporting it. And this and is then, like the most fucked up scene of the movie. Yeah, and then like the baby's neck ends up like snapping and like uh. dying like immediately, and then Jennifer Lords like freaks out and like runs up there, and is, they're like she's like you killed my baby, and then like they end up like. I don't know. Like, they rip the baby apart. They rip the baby apart and start like eating it like as if it's like kind of like the body of Christ type of thing. Like, that's, like, the most blatant, like, metaphor for, like, yeah, this so whole like, fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, eventually... And then, like, they start, like, fucking punching the shit out of her. Or, no, she... And then she freaks out and, like, starts, like, killing... Or, people, like, yeah. killing people because they just, like, murder her baby. And then they start punching her and, like, calling her, like, a whore and, like, all this mm-hmm. terrible thing, like a bitch. And then somebody fucking saves her from that. I don't even know. There's so much shit going on. Yeah, so it's like like we said, the movie's like really hard to follow and kind of like unclear, but eventually it's just like a huge metaphor for like religion. Basically, Javier is God. You find out that Javier is like a God figure and he basically... It's never like said that. It's though. never said that, but it's like you can take this away. It's like Javier is like God. What he wrote was the like Bible and all these mm. people are coming are like the people who are taken in religion and you you can speculate that Jennifer Lawrence is like a mother earth type figure or some sort of like, like, or like Mary Magdalene or something like that. So like the, the whole thing is just like a huge metaphor. Uh, everything ends in this crazy fucking fire. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain. It's just something you'll have to see. It's super fucking Sounds interesting, but it's, yeah, it's really overwhelming and very like intense, intense and claustrophobic and you can't really get a breath. Yeah, because the and way they shoot the movie is like close up on Jennifer Lawrence basically the entire time. Yeah, so you kind of feel like you never get like any like relief. Yeah, and like you're in her position, like you want everybody to leave, and like you're seeing everything that's happening from her perspective. kind of perspective. Yeah. Anyway, so like this movie is just I don't know, I can't really put it into words, but it was just super intense. Like the first time I've gone to a movie and like actually had some sort of like really like physical like almost like it almost felt physical experience leaving the theater you feel like you got hit by like a fucking freight train i mean it was just a crazy experience watching this movie and it was also just like kind of jarring because you don't know i mean it's not like like i said it's not straightforward storytelling so it's all metaphorical because you're so you're spending the whole movie figuring out what the fuck is going on and you realize it's just like yeah i don't know it's just i've never seen anything like it uh yeah one of the most interesting movies i've seen in a long time 
and a bold fucking Hollywood move. Yeah. Yeah. The director is the same director that directed Requiem for a Dream and Black Swan. Black Swan. I never saw Black Swan. I always wanted reference. to. But it's did. really good. I That's that another movie that was like. All his movies are really fucked up and dark. Yeah. I know there's yeah. a part of the movie where she appears she rips off her fingernail and it's really gross. Yeah. Or something like or that. Or like it's like a piece of skin. Yeah. And she starts like. That's a hangnail. But a really long hangnail. <laughs> it's not like the hangnail. It's like, it was just like a piece of skin. Yeah. Like the peely skin. I got But you. not like, in, not the, anyway. Well, yeah, that sounds pretty intense. I'm peely definitely going to check it out. Yeah. Yeah, I left the theater. Like. Bawling. She was crying. Shit. Like, just because of how, it not necessarily because it was like sad or whatever. Or like, it was just more like tears of like frustration and like anxiety mm. and it like poured out of me yeah it was super intense like you felt like you couldn't breathe throughout the whole movie it's, it's pretty crazy yeah. and it's a really long movie like you thought that it was going to end after like in at two different points you thought it was going to end and then it just kept going because i thought it was going to end after like all the people from the funeral like left and then they ended up like having like this happy thing and i thought oh that's how it's going to end and then no, it's like this whole other fucking thing happens with like the baby and everything. And that was probably even longer than the first half. And it was just really disorienting because you're like never know what's going to happen. You don't know when, what they're going to end on. Yeah. Because the, th- the trailer, again, kind of made it seem like it was just going to be like Michelle Pfeiffer and Ed Harris are like these unwanted guests. And that's like the extent of it. Yeah. So you don't know anything else is going to happen. Right. Yeah. You, you it definitely the trailer definitely paints it as like these people are staying with us, but they end up being like super fucked up kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the husband doesn't believe it, but Jennifer Lawrence knows it, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of like it comes at night kind of thing. Same where they kind of like trip where you yeah. like they trip you up completely. And it's like a whole different thing. Com- yeah. Entirely. Um, yeah. Damn. 2017 in a nutshell. There you go. There you go. Well, yeah, we've been talking for a while. We were going to get into some other, like what we didn't, we we, kind of touched on it. Sure, we didn't get to see or something maybe we didn't like, but I think we we gave you your fill. Yeah, I think so. Our top five best films of 2017. What did you guys think? Did did you share any favorites with us? us? Let us know. What are some of your top Films of the year, this glorious year of 2017. God, it's ending. Ian, thanks for coming on. No problem. It's good having you here. back. Good to see you. It's good to have it's me back. Good to have a house like a million. Yeah, our other, our other guest, Sam. <laughs> May as well just be a guest. No, we love, we love you. It's almost like you never left. Yeah. True. Welcome back. All right. Well, um, thanks for watching. You can find us on extrashone.com and YouTube at SpanktorVision. I'll drop in the blue TV if you're watching. You can see it. We're doing it live. On, well, we're not doing it live. We do video on YouTube if you're listening to this and if you want to maybe watch it. Um, yeah, let us know some of your favorite movies. Hope you had a good fucking year. And come back next week. Bing. See you later. Me. Yeah, well, they were driving, and, like, two of them were supposed to go to the Army, and one of the guys didn't want to go to the Army, and so his brother was just like, oh, you don't want to go to the Army, you're not a man, and so they're not watching the road. All of a sudden, cow. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. And then they put it in the cow dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was... Right next to the baby dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> it, not to be confused.